Live from Rome, the World Athletic Championships. An exclusive presentation continuing tonight on 10. Stand up and tell Alex Gray. Tonight's movie is proudly presented for your enjoyment by Ampol and Singapore Airlines. And a very good evening to you. Before commenting on Bullet, may I say thank you so much to everybody in the radio, especially my dear friend, Jeremy Cordeaux, how delightful it was to be in Adelaide and to meet so many nice people. All the people in radio were just so supportive and I'm thrilled at the response to my book. And may I say thank you to everybody at Angus and Robertson's in the Rundle Mall. What a delightful time I had, and hopefully you people there, and also all the nice people who came to say hello. I did appreciate meeting you. I'm so excited you feel the same way I do about the Fountainhead, and it's just so encouraging to know I've got so many friends. And by the way, to those of you who weren't able to get into Angus and Robertson's while I was there, and there were quite a few phone calls. I did sign a few copies. They may even have a few left if you ask them. So uh, I wouldn't leave it too long to ask, as a matter of fact. Well, I'm so much looking forward to our next encounter. But we have encounters every week, don't we? On Channel 10 on Saturday night. So I'm thrilled about that. Tonight, Bullet. If ever there was an actor in search of the right part, it was Steve McQueen in the 1960s. And in 1968, he found it playing the central character, Bullet, in this movie based on the novel Mute Wist Witness by Robert L. Pike. McQueen looks good. He looks right and he is right in this film. The character comes alive in what essentially is an old-style Warner Brothers crime melodrama done with a 1960s finish and it hasn't dated. Lalo Schifrin's music, the wonderful shots of San Francisco, a good cast and that big car chase that's so famous now. I can remember when the film came out in 68, some of us said, my God, this is the most exciting bit of movie action since this is Cinerama. You know, in some scenes of that car action, there was a camera attached to the side of Steve McQueen's car, and in some of it, in one stage, the camera was totally ruined, but the film was all right. And director Peter Yates, who got to direct Bullet because of his direction of the British film Robbery, and he himself was a racing car driver and at one stage worked with Sterling Moss, Peter Yates sat in the back seat of the car being driven by Steve McQueen to get really spot-on subjective footage. And boy, it looks great on the screen. I'm sure you're going to be thrilled all over again. I like the cast in Bullet. Here are some of the people of special interest. For example, Simon Oakland, who plays Captain Bennett. And in the background, an actor I always like to see on the screen, Norman Fell, who plays the part of Baker. Strong all the way down the line, including Robert Vaughan in one of the best movie parts he ever had outside of television appearances. Now, here's a face for which you may not have a name. The character's name's Delgetti and he's played by Don Gordon. Don Gordon's only had a couple of leads, but he's very capable, very interesting man with a, with a good face and a good profile. Watch him, watch Don Gordon, and you'll realize there's something special. And next but last, next to last, I should say, we have Jacqueline Bissett, who proved to be a very fine leading lady for Mr. McQueen, even though she was, in fact, one inch shorter than he was, which caused a bit of consternation, as you can imagine, but they got around that very cunningly. Finally, we didn't know who he was then, but we certainly do now. The character is a taxi driver, and he's played by Robert Duval. Very good. There's a lot going for Bullet. I'm going for it. I hope you are too. <laughs> 